Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know who I am, I go by Gaki. Um, typically, I notice that a lot of tarot readers um, start doing their videos on Mondays, um, but my Aquarius placements are like, nah, I'm unconventional. So I've been doing them on Wednesdays. Um, this reading is going to apply from for a week. So from now until next Wednesday, I'm going to feel it out and see how Wednesday works out for me. But um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a collective tarot reading. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take some deep breaths to begin, and then we'll see what comes up, what energies come out for the week. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and take some time to take some deep breaths. Um, we're gonna take some deep breaths through our nose, and you're gonna wanna fill up your stomach with air. When you breathe out, um, you want to let, like release that air. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and take a deep breath, breath into our nose. And out through your mouth. Another deep breath in through our nose. Out through your mouth. Breathing in light, peace, clarity, love. Another deep breath in. And out through your mouth. All right, so I did go into meditation beforehand and some of the things that were coming up were um, some of us may have some throat blockages. Um, there might be uncomfort in our body. Um, I heard let it out, uh, speak your truth and protect your energy, your crown chakra, listen to your gut, your intuition, get into your body um, and Feeding your soul, your mind, and your body. Um, I'm not quite, I never know what decks I'm going to use until the reading, um, until I actually get to doing the reading. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with uh, the Crow Tarot. As I'm shuffling, feel free to set an intention. Um, and yeah, just keep whatever it is that um, it could be symbols or signs um, in mind that could potentially help. And remember, it is a collective reading, so this not everything will necessarily apply to you at all times. Um, it can, but it won't always. And um, yeah, get in where you fit in, take whatever resonates and leave the rest. All right, um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the energy in the cards. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, God. Oh, I saw a card was trying to pop out. Thank you, universe, for everything that you do for us. Thank you for all the protection and the blessings. Thank you for rising us out of our bed. Please bring forth the messages that you would like the collective to hear at this very moment. What are the messages that we need to hear this week that are in our highest good and the highest good of those around us? Can I get one card to begin, please? What are their messages for this week? I wanted to pop out. I have the Page of Cups. I'm going to keep pulling cards and then I'll go over them with you guys at the very end as well. Thank you for tuning in. What are the messages that we need to hear for this week? Ooh, all right. So two of those wanted to come out. They did come out sideways. I'm going to put them back and um, if they're meant to come out, they will come back out. Another card just popped back out. So we have the Five of Swords in reverse. I think, I feel like we got this last week as well. What other energies will we be coming through for this week? What other messages would you like for us to know? That's so funny. Um, Remember I said if it's meant to come out, it's going to come back out. This is one of the cards that had popped out and it just popped back out. And we also did get this last week. So... I am seeing similar energies um, from last week coming into this week as well, which doesn't surprise me too much since um, that's not that many weeks away. I'm going to go ahead and pull one more card from this deck and then I will...
we'll probably go ahead into a different deck. Any other messages that we need to hear at this very moment for this week that are in our highest good and highest good of those around us? We have the Eight of Swords in reverse. Yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling like stuck energy. And as I mentioned before, um, when I was meditating, I did hear letting out and uncomfort. Um, and I can see that playing out in the cards right now as well. I'm going to go ahead and use my Mystic Mondays Tarot now. Please cleanse and clear the energy in this in these cards so that we may receive the messages that are in our highest good and the highest good of those around us. What other energies will we be encountering this week? What should we be looking out from now until next Wednesday? I have the King of Swords. Any other? Nice. The Nine of Cups in reverse. Any other messages that we need to hear for this week? The Ace of Pentacles in reverse. I'm going to pull for one more deck. And I keep looking at this, um, the Heart Tarot deck, so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull some from here and I'm going to pull an oracle card, get some advice, and we'll go right into the reading as well. I wanted to keep this short, but I'm feeling guided to pull from this deck as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's It's been a long day. I don't know if anybody else is feeling tired as well, if it's just me. Um, it's the, collect, the energy in the collective as well. But please clear and cleanse the energy in these cards so that we may receive the messages that are in our highest good and the highest good of those around us. What are the messages that we need to hear for this week? What other messages do we need to hear for this week? I have the sun. Any other messages, spirit? Any other messages? Okay, that one definitely wanted to pop out we have the king of crystals in reverse i'm gonna take one more from this deck all right the page of swords interesting okay I'm going to go ahead and take advice and um, that oracle deck. What is the advice for this week? Can I get advice for this week? Please move the energy in these cards so that we may receive the messages that are in our highest good and the highest good of those around us for this week. What is the advice for the week? It says a fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into these cards um, so we can figure out what's going out this week. And I'll pull that Oracle card at the end so we can wrap it up as well. I'll go ahead and show you guys the cards as I'm going through them as well. Um, that way the visuals can also help and you could also take your own interpretation from whatever it is that you see in the visuals. I know the words may be um, backwards uh, because of the front camera, but okay, we have the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is, creative crow, is a creative crow who finds inspiration practically everywhere she looks. The crow leans in and listens to a fish spin romantic tales of love and travels. Um, that's funny that love comes up because we did get that lover's card come up as well. This young energetic bird delights in discovering new ideas and experiences, especially if they seem unconventional. 
<laughs> I'm laughing because I used the word unconventional before I started getting into the actual reading. Um, spirit is funny. Her vision of the world is almost childlike, full of play and wonder. The Page of Cups appears to you as a reminder that dreams can often provide the answers or inspiration we seek. Stay open-minded because alternative solutions may be found from a different and creative perspective. Um, so it seems like this is going to be a very intuitive time. Uh, pay attention to your dreams. If you, um, if you don't already do this, it would be a good idea to write out your dreams and really look into them and see what your subconscious is trying to tell you or what messages are trying to come through. We don't always get answers or messages in the 3D, in the physical and they can come in many other different ways and creative ways. It can be through synchronicities, through angel numbers, um, messages through other people as well. Then we do have the Five of Swords in reverse. Thank you guys for tuning in. Okay, and this is in reverse, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. There's just something that needs to be looked at there. Um, so reverse the Five of Swords indicates that you are tired of fighting and you have accepted that some gains are not worth the battle. Uh, this came up last week. We were talking about um, Mercury retrograde. We were talking about communication, um, revisiting, and um, kind of taking in a way, inventory of what we're putting our energy into, what we're investing our time, energy into, not only in regards to, um, it can be um, going back to people, places, situations, um, replaying things in our heads. Uh, sometimes, some things are just not worth fighting over and some things are just not worth keeping around in your energy if it's draining you draining more than adding um it's time to cut those losses and it might not i always say um lessons are blessings in disguise and you shouldn't even consider that a loss everything is working out for your highest good and yeah this i think this that this is going back to last week and just tying it into this week that we're tired of of putting our energy and giving ourselves to situations and things that are no longer in alignment and coming to to an energy of acceptance and being able to move forward in that acceptance. The Lovers was another card that did come up. Um, and this also ties back in with last week as well as that last card that... Um, we were just with the five of swords that we were just talking about. Um, so the lovers talks about love, business partnerships, choices, and relationships. This doesn't necessarily tie in with just uh, romantic relationships. Um, on the surface, this card represents love and unity. However, it goes deeper as it also describes karmic passion and soul relationships that span lifetimes. The crows have traveled together through space and time. Drinking from the same heart binds them as their veins fill with the same life force, joining their spirit for eternity. Together, each decision is made as the outcome will forever affect them both. Um, remember, we were just talking about making decisions and the outcomes and reevaluating things as well. From the person that you love, to the place that you settle down, this car asks that you examine your belief systems and use your inner compass when deciding to join forces. The lovers brings the message that some benefits and consequences will eventually reveal themselves for better or for worse. And then we have the Eight of Swords. Um, the Eight of Swords is more so this energy of being uh, stuck, but binding yourself. So if you guys can see this crow right here, there's all these sorts around them and they're binded here. 
This is in reverse, however. And uh, reverse, this indicates that a time of hardship is ending. That's so funny. That um, goes back to what we were just talking about with the Five of Swords in reverse as well. Coming to acceptance. But hardship's ending. As a result, you have learned lessons that will help you manage future challenges. So yeah, going back from last week to this week, we may have or are getting out of these this um this space where we have been re evaluating things and just coming more to acceptance um getting through hardships that we may have been going through and being able to move forward We have the King of Swords here. There is a lot of sword energy. Sword energy has to do with the um, element of air as well. That has to do a lot with like, um, with like more so like the your the more so of like the thinking aspect of things of like the the mental side of things. Oh my. God. I'm not sure if that's making sense, but yeah, and more like logical thinking. All right, so we have the King of Swords. <laughs> it's, I, I laugh because I think it's just, it's, crazy to me how things end up connecting we were just talking about coming to a place of acceptance to coming to a place of um hardships ending and this card talks about clarity mental strength i did just talk about logic mental things um another keyword for this is cerebral um and the king of swords so it has to do with the uh, power lies in the mind. Intellectual strength gives the king of swords his edge, ruling with dignity and authority. His judgment is sound based on objectivity to find the honest truth. Before I got into the reading, I did talk about speaking your truth as well and having throat blockages. Um, so say what it is that you need to say. Don't hold yourself back. Speak your truth. Um, when we have throat blockages, it, it can manifest in also physical pain and, yeah, in other ways. Um, sorry, I like <laughs> went blank there for a moment. Um, but yeah, he detaches himself from emotions and believes in solving problem using his intellect and fair objectivity. It's always good to have a balance between your emotions and logical thinking. Um, if you're all, if you're not, it's not to say that it's bad to be in your emotions. However, if you are only seeing things from that perspective of only taking into consideration emotions and not also balancing it out with um, logic, you can get lost in in those emotions and your perception could potentially be um how do i say it like it can be just not clear <laughs> i can't think of the word that i was trying to say thriving under structure structure and rules the king of swords is able to sort through systems and look back at history in order to find answers he asks you to accumulate your wealth of knowledge and detach yourself from emotions. Research before making important decisions, carefully weighing all options and scrutiny. Experience has led the King of Swords to embrace rules and to lead with a conscious compass in his kingdom. Structure allows freedom to flourish. So again, there always has to be that balance. Um, but it seems like this week we have to set more structures. We have to... Um, really get into a space we where we're not just um, lo getting lost in the dreamy realm of things. You want to take into consideration and set plans to be able to move forward as well. This also has to do with, uh, we just had a new moon, um, 
not that long ago. I want to say, I don't even know what day it is, what is time anyways, but like five days ago-ish. Um, and new moons are good for setting intentions, for new structures, for um, like a, it's kind of like a clean slate. And so this is also going back to that and putting into motion things that um, just bringing some more structure into life, into your life, if that's something that you are needing to do or to look at. And then we have the Nine of Cups in reverse. So the Nine of Cups talks about uh, wish come, wishes coming true, fulfillment, and pleasures. Your wish is my command. The Nine of Cups is referred to as the wish card in the tarot deck. Um, but this is in reverse now that I am actually looking back at it. Um, yeah, this is talking about bringing balance into your all areas of your life. Um, health, wealth, love, relationships. And this also goes back to creating some structure. I know this is backward for you guys, so... This is going back to balance and creating structures and yeah, just bringing more clarity and balance into your life. Um, before the before I got into the reading, I was talking about feeding your soul, your mind and your body and um, getting into your body, listening to your gut intuition. We have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Thank you guys for being patient with me. I feel like I missed something for the Nine of Cups. Actually, hold on. Yeah, I most definitely did. Yeah, this is, um, this is, yeah, talking, going back to the uh, Nine of Cups in Reverse, um, unrealistic expectations, and it talks about, like, your vision is not going according to plan, causing frust frustration and upset. You're expecting it to appear before, <laughs> before you with little effort, and sorry to break it to you, but it just does not work that way. Put in time to, put in time for your craft, and slowly but surely things will start to happen. Luxurious living is well worth it when you've earned it. An overindulgent attitude is making you feel better in the short term, but will show its negative effects in the long run. Take care of yourself and know when to say no. This overindulgence could be masking something deeper that needs your attention. Tend to that wound and ask what overindulgence is filling in for. When going through this process, be as compassionate with yourself as possible. Moderation is key to feeling satisfied with all aspects of life. And yeah, again, going back to how we were talking about the King of Swords, um, bringing in structure, knowing that you can manifest things, but then you also have to be willing to put in the work. And um, when you plant a seed, it doesn't grow immediately. It takes time for it to blossom. And even if it doesn't feel like what you're putting work into or what you're the goal you're trying to achieve if it, even if it feels like you're not getting anywhere um just the fact that you're putting some energy into it um it's gonna keep just growing and evolving and uh, an example of this for me is <laughs> so lately i've noticed that i've been just overindulging with food um in the sense that like i'll just eat in a sense why do i keep saying this? I'll, I'll eat and like even when I'm not hungry and I've noticed that it's because I'm like avoiding doing other things that I'm supposed to be doing and um, it's just it's not a healthy habit and it's becoming a coping mechanism that is just unhealthy. So that is definitely something that I have to work through 
this week and just be more conscious of it. Um, it's in my awareness now, but now I actually have to take the further step to be able to apply that knowledge and to actually put into the put it put the work into it and um just you know tell myself like hey like you you know that you're doing this because you're let's say like procrastinating from doing something else or you're trying to avoid this or like dealing with certain emotions as an example um instead of it overindulging and eating when my body is not even hungry or like I don't even need to eat um I could go and write out why I may be feeling this need to to be overindulging or why it's it it's just why it may be um hard for me to get to the thing that I'm supposed to be doing or deal with what I'm supposed to be dealing with um, instead of taking the easier route and being, okay, well, um, I am just going to go eat because like, I'm trying to avoid this other thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but yeah, going, that was just an example. It can apply in a lot of different ways for everybody. Um, but moving on to the Ace of Pentacles, this is in reverse. And this talks about money mishaps, reevaluation, financial hardship, and reevaluation is coming back up again. Pay close attention to your finances. You may need that extra cushion that you've been saving up for. Manifesting may feel a little harder with financial setbacks, but don't let that dismay you. This is just a sign to reevaluate your plan of what's working and what's not. Um, we did talk about reevaluation last week and then this week we also that's something that we started off with Don't be afraid to ask help from a financial advisor or do some digging with your own money research Weigh the pros and cons before you commit to payments You may not be able to afford you may be consumed with climbing up the ladder and obsessing over money at the expenses of balancing The other areas in your life have a plan with financial goals you want to reach and create stability for yourself again going back to that stability we were talking about with the king of swords you see this this represents that stability um but yeah it will set the foundation for the future for of your new ventures even if it is just an idea right now and remember, like, if you are setting things into motion, putting in the work and letting that grow, um, you won't always immediately see the results, but setting plans in and structure will definitely help in the long run. All right, and we have the sun. And typically, um, when the sun come up, comes up, it tends to be a um, message of, like, being able to just things feeling lighter which is um going back to that eight of swords that we saw earlier as well this was talking about moving away from hardships and then we can see that by um the end of the week we're moving into that energy of moving past those hardships it says excellent news the sun card is a card that puts a positive spin on any situation and tear it spread as its radiating energy fills everything with joy, warmth, prosperity, and vitality. The giver of life on planet Earth, the sun, brighten, brightens any negative quote-unquote cards within a reading and instead suggests that the abundance and favorable outcome, outcomes are near. While the moon is symbolic of the divine feminine, the sun represents the divine masculine. You're feeling confident and ready to take on new projects with enthusiasm. Efforts from past projects are beginning to bear fruit. We were just talking about that with uh, the... Well, actually, we're talking about that with the Ace of Cups. And the Nine of Cups. The King of Swords. If you set... If you set those structures that we were talking about and move with stability and are taking inventory and uh, making sure that you have a plan with your finances as well, 
the outcome is going to be abundance and not just in money matters, but in all different matters. Uh, we have two more cards after this and then that advice that we pulled. Um, thank you guys for being patient with me. This is the second week that I'm doing this since I kind of um, just took a long break. Um, yeah, so it says efforts from past projects are beginning to bear fruit. And we talked about that as well, like giving projects and things time to grow. Enjoy and celebrate these fruits of your labor. Good things are coming your way in the form of brand new ventures and projects bound to be successful and bring you public recognition. Know that when the sun appears, anything is possible and you're fully supported. Enjoy this precious time. That's beautiful. I was getting vibrations through my whole body. I call it the tingles <laughs> as I was um, delivering that message, that message to you guys. We have the uh, King of Crystals here in reverse. So reversed, um, it talks about, it implies that, that's a, that a situation is unpredictable. You're all over the place and do not know where to put some of your energy. When managed properly, again, this goes back to stability and managing your time, your energy, your resources, what we were talking about pretty much throughout this whole reading. You can redirect your focus onto a creative project. However, when left ignored, the situation can result in unnecessary arguments and rest restlessness caused by a lack of appropriate direction. And, okay, so here are, are the two different outcomes. We were just talking about if you are taking, if you're being, if you're reevaluating things, if you're um, really seeing where you're putting your energy and bringing in that structure then the results are going to be abundance however as the this card was talking about if you choose to ignore all of that if you decide not to um bring in that stability if you decide not to add more structure into your life then nothing is really going to come from that You have that choice of being able to manage that. So you have the choice of of having that the sun ending the week with the sun energy or ending with the energy of the king of crystals. And then we have the page of swords. All right, so the Page of Swords says, In innovative and unique views are brought to you by the Page of Swords. If this relates to a person, you know, be open-minded to their ideas, no matter how unconventional. Again, we're, we're talking about unconventional, and that word came up once during my, before I started the reading, before I even knew it was going to come up, and then it came up twice during the reading. Um, yeah, so even if things don't, seem like typical to you or if it's something out of your comfort um don't be so close-minded about things and be open-minded and give things a chance as well you can learn more from them than meets the eye their ability to explore and discover new concepts or plants is what makes them so special but beware that some problematic circumstances may arise from their risk-taking in which the Page of Swords faces a rude awakening. Being curious and naive may open some doors, but also make you bump your head every now and then. I'm going to give some clarification on this um, Page of Swords. So definitely, like I mentioned, be open-minded, but also be discerning and um, learn to make decisions for yourself and, and be able to, you know, um, have your own insight as well. You can't have someone always dictate um, 
yeah dictate what what you should be what you should be thinking in your thoughts can i get clarification of this on this page of swords please can we get clarification on this page of swords please clarification on this page of swords oh okay we had one flip over Um, it's the tower in, in reverse. Yeah, it, it this is just going back to talking about, um, as I was mentioning, be open-minded, but definitely use discernment as well. All right, and then we have the advice for the week. We'll go ahead and go through that one, and I'm going to pull Oracle card so we can wrap this up and again this is the full moon in Aries a fiery climax approaches it's time to see if you've been a little too much me 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 there's a tug of war going on between what you want and what someone else wants and yeah, this is tying back again to what we were just talking about. But you'll have to wait a little while to see what's going to happen next. As you wait, ask yourself if you've been handling the situation as sensitively as sensitive. Si wow, I can't say that word. As you could have done. If you know deep down that you've been a little rash or harsh gone too fast or overstepped the mark, then accept that on some level you've created, created the situation yourself, which means that you can create your way out of it too. Again, you have the choice. Remember, you have the choice of being in the sun energy or the king of crystals. You get to decide what energy it is that you want to be in and how it is that you want to end your week. When this card comes up, a peak is coming and it could be very fiery. Be nice, be kind, smile, and be polite when you navigate to where you want to be. Being assertive is good, just don't write the rough, rough should over anyone. If you're in a tense situation, meditate your way to peace. You need to have more fun. The full moon in Aries is a super fiery time when emotions can run very high. On the upside, there's excitement about what may lie ahead, but tempers are likely to flare with fresh comments and decisions. No matter when you pull this card, it signals that the situation has just or is about to come to a peak, perhaps in a rather heated way. It could be a price to pay if you have been too competitive or too blunt. Yeah, so it looks like there's a lot of decisions to be made throughout this week. Um, we're moving away from hardships, but we also have to reevaluate structures and how it is that we want to move forward and depending on what it is that you choose that could either you know bring you some more stability peace and calm or if you're being avoidant if you're not dealing what it is that you have to deal with this week it can leave you feeling in a place where you just feel more depleted um feeling even more stuck not feeling like you're moving forward and we're gonna go ahead and end with the oracle message this is from um a deck called centering in the darkness what is the final message that the collective needs to hear for this week what is the final message for this week Ooh, okay there's too many that wanted to come out can i get one card for the final message for this week please a final card for the message for this week. It's born from a lotus. This is the first of the Lotus series card. 
A woman whose spirits have broken open so wide their entire world was consumed by it and gave birth to a new one. She arises from the waters, being born from a lotus rooted deep in the mud. If you feel as if life has broken you down, this card comes to you now to say you were broken open for the intention to bloom, arising from the waters of your healing. The water is an element of renewal and cleansing. You will never walk out of the ocean from the same place you entered. From the constant moving of waves and vastness, the water is a symbol of life itself. It is more than just the word of healing, for you are the ep epitome of creation after destruction. It may be hard to accept what has been destroyed in your life. It is even harder to accept the pain that you have experienced in some crazy, crazy cosmic order of meant to be so you could learn a new lesson of healing. The core message of this card is nothing can break you to destroy you, dear one. You did come back down here. You didn't come back back down here to wither and die. To be alive in a time like now means your soul is purposeful and resilient. It means you are ready now. Water yourself with gentleness on a daily basis. If you receive this card with ancient stargazer, which that isn't the case, so we're gonna have it, go ahead and skip through that. Yeah, and this is, just goes back to the message that I was receiving before um, we hopped into the cards about feeding your soul, your mind and your body. Um, listening to your intuition and and uncomfortable feelings like we're going through these phases of going through a lot of uncomfortable maybe physical and energetic shifts and you just have to you have to just let that out and um, be gentle with yourself have that patience to keep growing those those seeds um, so that they can blossom so that you can blossom and yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for joining. If you stuck around for this reading, I appreciate you. Um, this will be posted on YouTube. So if you want to go back and re-listen to the messages, you are free to do that. Um, or if you missed the beginning of it, you'll be able to see that over there. Thank you guys for joining.